Hello and welcome. This is Rachel from the Dotting Center. So I've recently been thrown into a full on art obsession with making painted sea urchin mandalas. I wanted to create a spiky, bumpy texture that added an extra feature of being irresistibly touchable and tactile. For this project, I used various paints and methods to achieve this look and I'm happy to share with you what worked for me. So let's take a look and see how this thing was made and go ahead and make one for your own collection. I know you're gonna love this project. It's a lot of fun. I used an unusually wide variety of acrylic paints for this project. Everything from a liquid to a soft body to a heavy body acrylic mainly to test out the different um, thicknesses and density of the dots. Everything will be listed in the description box below. So apparently all sea urchins are divided into five different segments. So uh, what I did was I used one of my divider stencils, the 5 and 10 divider and I used it to divide my wood pebble into five different sections. And I'll show you how to do that next. Now for this project, I used a three inch wood pebble and I painted it with a uh, beige paint and I made it have a chalk finish by adding Deco Arts chalk finish medium. This stuff is great for basically taking any acrylic paint and making it a chalk paint. So you can use whatever color you'd like and it makes it a little bit gritty so that it accepts the um, chalk pencil a lot better. And then you just use a little bit of framing putty in the middle of your object and using the five divider stencil I just segment this piece into five different sections using my chalk pencil. Now this is why these are so flexible because they work great for rounded objects. It's great for keeping everything all aligned and all your dots on point. So after looking at it, I realized that, mm, you know what, I think I want all 10 dividers. So I put the stencil back on and I went ahead and segmented it all the way out. So now there are 10 different dividers. So now for each one of these segments, I'm gonna use an angled brush to apply the two different shades of color that I selected. And there's no reason to be perfect here. This base color coat is really meant to just look like a loose color wash. Um, you actually don't want to have any perfectly straight lines because if you look at sea urchins, the natural sea urchin shells, they don't have perfectly straight lines. So they are more, um, you know, it's like a, it's, it's more amorphous, more of like an organic coloring thing that you're doing here. So don't worry too much about it. We're going to cover it with dots anyway. So basically it's just one segment gets one color and the next gets another color. So you have, uh, and then you have a little bit of a space in between segments so that um, you have some of that peach cream color coming through.
Okay, now that the green is done, we're gonna come in with that robin's egg blue and do every other segment in the blue color. All right, so both colors are applied. I'm gonna dry off my brush and just come in and do a dry brush technique. Take out some of those um, peaks and kind of smooth out the edges and um, give it more of a soft look. Now this handmade modern paint is kind of like a soft bodied acrylic. So I'm gonna add some pouring medium to make it more self-leveling and I do this is like my magic medium not only can you use it to smooth out and um, maintain like puffier dots but it also when you mix it it doesn't get bubbles something in the mix gets rid of the bubbles and the peaks it literally is the perfect medium for what I'm looking for and it, it never lets me down. I've used matte medium and gel medium and uh, different kinds of varnishes and just really whatever I have um, in my studio that I can mix, I've tried it and pouring medium, it has been the very best, consistently the best medium to use to get just the right consistency. Now, you heard me right. I just said that this pouring medium gives me the best consistency consistently every time. It's a, words are funny, aren't they? <sighs> yeah, grammar. Oh, hey look, so we just put some dots down. We're putting the, the first few dots, which is always um, both exciting and nerve wracking because this this is really where your eye is drawn. It's right in the center of your design. And so you wanna get these as close to center and as nice as you possibly can. Now I want you to pay attention to the surface area on these dots. See how they're nice and rounded and smooth? That's not, I'm not any better at dotting. It's only because that paint is the right consistency. It took me so long to realize that really dotting, if you want to get a nice dot, it's pretty much 80% paint and 20% skill with a dotting tool. I hate to admit that. I'd like to think that I'm like super talented, but it's totally all about the mix of your paint. Now here's a different view and I'm coming in with one of my very favorite tools. This is a 1 8 inch pointed silicone tool and I'm just going to dot right on top of each one of those chalk lines all the way down the sides of the pebble. Okay, so for this first row, I'm gonna switch the colors and use the, the blue on the green background. And I'm just gonna do one big dot right behind that first green dot.
And for this row, I'm going to follow that blue dot up with two more dots to fill the space. Okay, so now for the fourth row out of blue dots, I'm going to keep that same size dot, but I'm going to add more space all around it so, so that they don't touch and there's space for dots to surround the outside. And then I switch to one of my smallest rods and I just keep moving the size of the rod to a larger diameter all the way down to the sides. So now I switch to green paint on the blue background segments. And for these, it's in, I'm going to put place the dots in a zigzag pattern so that they're staggered. They're not exactly in a line. And if you look at real sea urchins, you'll see that this is one of the patterns that they actually have. And again, don't worry too much about getting the dots exactly perfectly circular shaped. If they're a little bit of an organic shape, that's actually kind of neat. And don't worry too much about getting the size exactly right either. I think that kind of the more uh, organic these shapes look, the better off this is going to be. Okay, so now that that side is dry, you just flip it over to the back and we're gonna finish off the bottom section right here. So grab a compass, get your center point, and then um, finish off each one of these segments so that it butts up right up against that circle and just finish it with both colors all the way around the bottom. So now just continue that pattern all the way down to finish the bottom section. Okay, so now I'm going to use this homemade modern um, acrylic paint and it's actually, it's a soft body paint. It's somewhere in between liquid and heavy body as far as the consistency, which is perfect for making puffy dots. So you can really load up your cone. This is a handmade um, paint cone and you can um, see how to make these in my 3D puffy dot video. It's actually super easy to make. Um, they're a little tricky to use. I'm still getting used to it, but um, it's really great for applying dots and it's the least expensive way to get started. So you can do this using a potato chip bag. And um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. It's a little bit of a mess, but I mean, hey, it's art, right? So you add the paint, you tape off the end just to make sure that it doesn't squish out all over you. And, um, and then this is ready to go. You basically pipe it on like you were like a cookie maker or a baker or something. And it 
it really it comes out in big puffy dots and I'll show you you always want to test it out first because those first few dots are uh, are a little strange you want to test out how they come out from the tip and you apply pressure on the back of the cone to push the paint out through that tip so one thing I found and it totally depends on what paint you use but just count on your dots shrinking after they dry. Um, I found that the more heavy body your acrylic is, the more it will tend to keep its shape. But these paints are a percentage of water and it just depends on how much water is included as to how much shrinkage you will get. But I've learned to just over exaggerate the amount of puffy that I want just expecting that they're going to shrink down just a bit. Okay, so now for the pistachio color, we're going to add this in another cone straight from the bottle with no medium and we're going to do the same thing with this color. Okay, so now it's dry and you can see that they lost some of their puffiness, but really this paint is amazing for holding its shape. This has got to be one of my favorite paints to use for puffy dots. And now comes the puff paint. This stuff I have mixed feelings about. It's um while it has a really nice nozzle and it comes out, you have a lot of control as to how much paint you can apply. Something happens to this paint where it deflates and it doesn't hold its shape as well. Um, but it's still a really fun paint to use and uh, yeah, I really liked using it for this project. It feels like frosting a cake. Okay, so now that it's dry, I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the bottom, continuing that pattern all the way down. Okay, so now the only way that I've found to get spiky dots, and that's what we see here, is these actually are pointy and they maintain their shape and they feel really nice. They actually are spiky when you touch them and they're dry. So you, the only way to produce these kind of dots is by using heavy body acrylics in that cone. Now, 
I have paint applicators that are perfect for every other kind of paint, but they won't take straight heavy body acrylics because they're so thick. So this is the only way that I've found as of today to apply heavy body acrylics to get those awesome pointy spiky dots. Now it's a little bit hard to control, but um, I really, I like the different shapes that you can get with cones and I think it's a fun, it's a fun tool to have because you never know when you want those spiky sharp dots. So here is my very favorite way to apply 3D puffy dots. This is um, a paint applicator and I sell these at the dotting center. They come in a 24 piece kit. You get 16 different applicator tips and um, you can use whatever kind of paint that you prefer. You can use your own paint. You don't need to use um, anything special. Although my special recipe is one part heavy body acrylics mixed with one part Liquitex pouring medium. It just it creates the most beautiful shiny Skittles like puffed up dot and um, they store in these bottles for months and uh, yeah you can get all the different sizes and dimensions of dots using these bottles. They're incredibly awesome. So I don't know if you can see in this video, but those white dots right there that I'm going over, those are from the Tulip Puff Paint. And see how they kind of deflate? They lose their shape a little bit. So I'm going over the ends with some more of that Robin's Egg Blue in the cone and just kind of fixing that, that pointy bit on the end. Okay, so it's all dry and oh boy. The feel of this thing is unbelievable. This is a whole new sensory thing to add to your art. It's so much fun to hold these. I can't even um, begin to describe how fun this is. Um, just to touch it. It's really, really neat. Now we're adding a blue top dot to those green dots. Okay, so now that everything is dry, I'm just going to add a top dot to the center in that peach color. And now that that's dry, I'm going to come in with my favorite gold paint and add gold right in the center of that in a smaller dot. And now I'm going to go through and add just a touch of gold to some of these dots just for an added bit of color. Okay, so now I have three different options for a glittery opalescent glaze. They're all in a blue-green kind of look, so it should pull together all of those colors nicely. And I swatched them out, and uh, I think there are two very clear winners and one very clear loser. 
I just, that Waverly one, it's really rough and sandy. The glitter is not very fine. So I don't really like that one too much, at least for this project. I know I'm gonna use it for something else. Now that Dragonfly Glaze is insane. It's so pretty. So it goes from a blue to a green finish, depending on how it shines in the light. That's a clear winner. And then this is really one of my favorite um, opal finishes. It's, um, it's got pink tones and green tones and blue. Um, it's got like a color shifting property to it and it's really fine, um, a, a really fine opal particle in it. So it's not gritty and sandy like the other one. Yeah, so if you can't decide between two, you just use both, right? Yes. More glitter, more better, right? So I'm using the Martha Stewart opal in the green and blue sections. And then I'm gonna use the dragonfly glaze in the peach and blue sections. And then the final step is just finish off the bottom and let it dry and then it's done. All right, so it's all dry. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It feels so cool to touch and it spins too. Whee! So I hope you guys made your own urchin. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you liked this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because I really love making videos and I want to make some more. So if you made your own urchin, please tag me, share with me. I want to see what you guys make. It's so exciting to see what you all come up with. And if you have any suggestions as to paints, or application methods that you want to share with the rest of us please list that in the comments below and come visit me at the dotting center if you need any new tools or supplies I'm happy to help so thanks again guys until next time <music>